So now that we've considered how to name so many of these types of organic molecules, now we have to actually react them and come up with some, uh, well, what are some common reactions that take place when certain of these types of molecules are reacted? Well, okay, well, organic reactions. The, the first type we're going to talk about is the substitution reaction. Now, it can be quite complex, and we'll get into the mechanism by which this operates in just a moment, uh, a little bit later. But right now, substitution essentially is something that's going to happen when you take an alkane or a benzene ring and react it with a substance. Now, let's say that, well, the, the most common substances to react these with that you'll see um, in textbooks and whatnot are when you take alkanes and you react them with halogens, like chlorine or bromine or iodine or fluorine or something like that. What's the mechanism by which these reactions take place? How do they take place? Well, if we say, well, let's take this chemical right here, which, of course, two carbons long and single bond, so that's ethane. We take ethane and we react it with chlorine. And so you might be asked, well, what is the product or products of that reaction? Substitution means a collision takes place between chemicals, like for instance, if I have models here, uh, uh, of course, yeah, I put ethane on the board, but this is methane, isn't it? Well, how do these chemicals react? And there's chlorine right here. Well, what can happen is, and what does happen, is that collisions take place, right? When you put these chemicals together and there's enough activation energy present that a collision may take place and you form something called a radical and then you've got a, a chemical that comes off and, and uh, now these chemicals can be have different names and we'll talk about those in just a while. But for right now, basically what essentially happens in a substitution reaction is that, well, one of the chlorines actually bonds onto that original molecule and so what do you end up with here? Well, you end up with chloromethane and then the other chlorine bonds with that free hydrogen and then you get hydrogen chloride. So what you're going to get in these types of reactions is you're going to have a halogen reacting with an alkane and you are going to take one chlorine and put it on to the chain and one comes off and bonds to that H that came off. And so what were you going to call this right here when you have H's all over here? You're going to call that chloroethane, and you don't have to call it anything else, although you can call it one chloroethane, that would be fine. And then hydrogen chloride. So that is a substitution reaction. And now, if we were to actually do an example where benzene is going to be there in the reaction, they react just like alkanes. So you've got the benzene ring, remember you can put the circle or the three lines in here, and you react it with, say, bromine. What are you going to get? Put the halogen onto there and you're going to get an H coming off of here in a collision with the bromine molecule, and HBr is going to be formed, and then you're going to get a benzene ring with a Br. And a lot of scientists say, you know what, I don't like to, they don't like to actually do that uh, benzene ring when there's a, a substitution that takes place on it. That, that's fine, but most of them don't get hung up on the fact that this is still benzene, so you go ahead and put the circle in there if you want to to indicate benzene. Well, what would that be called right there? Well, that's bromobenzene, right? So this is a substitution reaction where one comes off of the halogen, the other comes off. Now, by the way, it might not be a halogen. It might be something that has two parts to it that can be substituted on. Now, if you're going to be doing this in certain circumstances with certain catalysts, maybe this reaction will take place where the OH here of the water comes onto the ring, and all of a sudden you've got phenol, and what comes off is an H of one of these carbons here to bond with that other H to make H2. So that's an interesting reaction. That would be substitution as well. Okay, substitution reactions with alkanes and benzenes. Now, what about this reaction called addition? Well, Addition reactions are when you have double and triple bonded substances, alkenes or alkynes. Quite simply, if you've got something like this, which is a double bonded two carbon molecule, so that's ethene, now let's say it reacts with chlorine again. Okay, so what's going to happen? The chlorine can collide with, oh here it is, look, there's ethene. Hey, by the way, what's the shape of that? That's trigonal planar around both central carbon atoms there with sp2 hybridization. Okay, and now you take this, this um, 
ethene molecule and this chlorine. Now, what can happen here? Could a substitution reaction take place? Yeah, it can happen. But what can really happen here is because this molecule has an unshielded part here where this, where this can attack, bang, and hit the double bond, and blow it open into a single, now you can take the chlorine atoms and you can not substitute them on, but add both of them on to form, in this case, that would be a dichloroethane, but you have to see where the chloros are. One is going to be on one carbon, one is going to be at the other, right? Because if you open up that double bond, each carbon now is going to be called something called a nucleophile, which actually will attract this chemical called the electrophile. And then you are going to be able to put on two car chlorines, one on each carbon, and that's going to give you that 1,2-dichloroethene. So what you do when you write it out, you have to show that the double bond is broken, that you've got now hydrogens all around here, but you've got a chlorine here and a chlorine here, and you would call that 1,2-dichloroethane. Now, if you had a triple bond, see, now, by the way, that's balanced, hey, and that's a balanced reaction too, that's balanced. Now, the interesting thing is, if you had a triple bond, what do you do? Well, there is a stepwise mechanism, of course, for taking a triple bonded substance and then breaking it down with chlorine into a double bonded. But then we always just write them, essentially, as teachers, we want you to understand they can go right down from a triple bond to a single bonded substance. But what are you doing? You're breaking that triple bond down, and so that's one, two, three, four electrons, two each for each carbon that gets freed up, and all of a sudden, but you've only got two chlorines there. Well, not if you actually have two chlorine molecules and then you have four atoms of chlorine in total, right? So what happens is you bust that all the way down to a single bond where that was an H and that was an H originally, those two H's right there, they're still there. But now you've opened up two more bonds on each carbon to be able to put all four of these. And what would you name something like that? Well, there's chlorines and there's four of them, chloros. So it's a tetrachloro, but where are the chloros? On the first carbon and the second, there's, so it's 1122 tetrachloroethane. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So those are two reactions, substitution and addition reactions. And now I'm going to just talk about uh, how to do this substitution reaction in terms of a mechanism, uh, and this is really uh, for people who take IV chemistry.